Hello everyone and welcome to OptimizeYourTeaching.com. Today's lesson is going to assume that everyone has already established a Google Docs account because today we'll be using Google Docs to create a self-grading answer sheet. So before we get straight into the instruction on how to build one of these things, let's look at the final product and what it's capable of doing. Right here is a sample sheet. Yours will look the way that you design it, but this is what the students would see you would give them the URL address to find the site. Once they've clicked submit and they've submitted their questions to you, it feeds to you in a private spreadsheet into your Google Docs account. Here you can look at all the individual answers, but this is kind of hard to find. Instead, what we'll do is we'll install a script called Flubaroo that will grade your assignment for you. When your assignment is graded, it will look more like this. Obviously, I've taken the names out for, uh, to keep student privacy. It gives me averages, it identifies questions that were difficult for the majority of students, it gives me the percentage correct for each question, and it gives me an overall summary of the scores in general. One final feature that makes this well worth the time, I can go back and analyze my, my questions one at a time and see what the student answers are. So these are all the features of creating a generic answer sheet from Google Docs. Let's figure out how to build one. So this lesson will be the first of three. In lesson number one, we'll talk about creating a form, lesson two, using the form, and in lesson three, we'll talk about some advanced techniques and handy tips. So let's get started with lesson one, creating the form. Once signed into your Google account, you're going to want to go to Documents. Over on the left-hand side, you'll notice where it says Create. Click on Create, and then choose Form. The very first thing you need to do is title your form. Whatever you title the form, that's how this, the file will be saved in your Google Docs account. I'm going to title this one, Generic Answer Sheet. You can put any description down here. I usually tell students, please fill out the answers below based on the answers you put on your sheet. Before we get into the questions themselves, we want to make sure we record what student is submitting these questions. Whatever I type into here in the question title, is going to show up in my spreadsheet view. So you want to keep the question title as short as possible. So I would put in here, first. Down here in the help text, they will only see this when filling out the form. It will not show up in my spreadsheet. So this is where I can give an explanation of what to put in for an answer. So in my help text, I will put, please put your first name. So here on question type, if I leave it at the default text, that means I'm asking students to put in a simple text answer that would be appropriate for this question. I do want to make this a required question simply because um, I don't want them to be able to start answering the form without filling out who they are. Down here, it's already open sample question two, so I'll go ahead and use it. I highlight sample question two by clicking on it, and I'll no you notice the button's up over here. So now I click on the pencil to edit and it opens up sample question number two. Here I'm going to put down last, help text, I will put down, please include your last name. I'm gonna leave that text as well and I'm gonna mark this required question. Once I hit done, I see a little bit of what my form is going to look like. So what I need to do now is I'm gonna to go to add item. Uh, actually, we're gonna choose from a list. So question title, I'm going to put class. Help text, I'm putting down select your teacher and block you have the class. Option one would be my classroom, my classroom first block, my classroom second block, my classroom third block. Mrs. So-and-so's first block, Mrs. So-and-so's second block, Mrs. So-and-so's third block, etc. You can see how that would carry on. And now I'm going to put, choose from a list, and now this is where it gets super fast and easy. I'm going to put down here, number one. In the help text, I'm going to put down, use your hard copy to fill in the answer for this question. Now, we use these particularly on our predictive assessments, and those assessments are all multiple choice. So for the purpose of today, I will put that down. I leave the first one blank. By leaving the first one blank, they will see that they have to choose something. It is blank. If I put my first option in there, they might get lost later on and think that they've already answered it because there is an answer in there. The second option I would put for A, B, C, 
D, and then however many. You, I don't think there's a limit to how many you can have. Instead of doing this, let's say that I have a 10 question quiz, instead of doing this 10 times, I come over here to duplicate. I duplicate once, I duplicate twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times, eight times, nine times. I already have one out there. That should be 10. Now all I need to do is go into the edit for the second of my questions. Instead of having number one there, I put number two. I go into the next one. Instead of having number one, I put three, and so on. And there we have, I have all 10 questions in order. That's it. That's how you do it. You come over here, you hit save, just in case. It does save automatically, but if I see this button hasn't been depressed in a while, I'll click save, and that'll be it. On lesson two, we'll be talking about using the form. I'll see you there.